Welcome to the Bird Channel Podcast. This is number 17. My name is Hula, by the way. Uh, th- if you're wondering, what is the Bird Channel Podcast? I'm just going to tell you right off the bat. The Bird Channel Podcast is a place where people write their issues, problems, questions, anyone in Berlin, for any reason in Berlin, can send us a message and we'll try our best to help you in life. That's it. That's the mystery. Uh, we also talk a whole bunch of bullshit and have a little bit of fun. So um, if you want to join, this is your chance. If you like our crazy memes, uh, welcome. Welcome. But that kind of gives you a hint of the type of shit we talk about. If you're sensitive, if you don't like having ear herpes and you want to just run away and maybe go talk to your pastor, that's totally fine. Log off right now. Don't even listen to this shit. This definitely is not for you. We're going to be saying a lot of tits and fucks and nipples and shits and all kinds of things. You don't want to be hearing that right now. Now, one thing you're wondering, I bet, is, um, hmm, why do I only hear one sexy, sultry, beautiful voice right now and not Shamal's? Where is Shamal? Well, unless you've been living underneath a rock... In which case, I say go back under the rock. It's probably really safe under there. It's probably why you're still alive. Uh, Everyone out there is trying to avoid one thing. There's one thing on everyone's mind right now in Berlin, and uh, we're going to jump right into it because why sugarcoat it? We're not going to beat around the bush. Coronavirus is the reason why you're here. Now, some of you listen all the time, and I thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. And for the who's listening for the first time, I bet it's only because there's coronavirus. You're only listening to us because you have nothing else to do. You're thinking, well, this fucking idiot down here, he makes these stupid fucking memes. They make me laugh from time to time. You know what? Maybe his podcast is funny. Well, guess what? It's not. I'm joking. Okay, fine. Um, This is it. Okay? This is the end of days. This is what you've been watching Walking Dead for. It's what you've been saving up toilet paper and ramen noodles for. This is it. It didn't come in the way that we probably expected it to. Is your life like The Walking Dead yet? Hang tight. It probably will be soon. We are, uh, what is this? Social distancing? Quarantine? It's quarantine time. And Shamal's not here. So I got to do this shit by myself again. Um, So sorry. We do miss her. She is alive. She's well. I did talk to her. So don't worry about that. Berliners, stay the fucking side. That's it. I'm going to be like dad now. I'm going to be like that drunk stepfather who only comes home to drink and beat you. And you know what? It's beating time. I'm all out of drinks. Just stay the fuck home. You know why? Because I'm tired of not going out to the club and doing coke off of some girl's tits and coming home drunk. I miss those days. Those days are over now because people are, you know, okay, it's not their fault that we're sick. The virus, you know, it's nobody's fault except for the person eating bats and pangolins and and otters and beavers and I don't know what the fuck else. I, here's, here's what I'll say. I have some trouble feeling bad. I'm, I'm going to go on a little tangent here. I feel tr- I have I have trouble because I don't feel bad for a lot of human beings because as an organism, as humans, we have options for so much food. There's a vegan version of everything. There's probably vegan bat. How is there not a vegan bat soup? I bet it exists. They didn't even look it up. Go on YouTube and look up vegan bat soup. I bet there's something. But no, we're still eating the real fucking thing. Well, this is what the real thing brings. Stop eating fucking meat. Sorry, now that I got that out of my system. Um, there's one really good thing that came out of this. The fact that our, the way our information actually spreads now, we have internet, we have all, all this shit that we can communicate with each other. And human beings together, regardless of country, actually all came together and made a plan. Whether you look at the World Health Organization um, or individual governments working together, we proven that when we actually have a common threat, we can come together and do some shit. So I want less excuses later on uh, when it comes to global warming and other shit that we can actually be changing. No more, oh, it's just not possible. We know it's possible. We've done it now. All right. Now, we have to get out of this alive, first of all, which we will. To all of you out there having Rona fears, you fear another Rona, it's going to come get you in your sleep. It's going to break in through your window when you're sleeping and tickle your booty hole. It's not. Chill out. It's corona. It's, it's, it can make you sick. Some people can go. For the most part, it isn't enough to be worried about. But what it is enough is to make it a, what's it, a concerted effort to beat it. Let me stay inside your fucking house. It is such a simple thing. Nothing drives me crazier than they're going around on my little walk, my little quarantine walk. And I see like huge groups of people in the park just like laughing and having beers. It's like, why? Why? And then I let it go. You got to let it go. You have to. I'll give you one concrete example. It's my own country. I'm sure by now you could tell by the way I talk. I come from the United States of A. Okay. The United States of assholes. And that's where the fuck I'm from. And when I look at what's going on over there. 
it is both sad and hilarious at the same time. Because these are a lot of the people who are following this big fucking orange balloon headed motherfucker who the it's my fake news, fake news, this fucking idiot. I'm so tired of his voice and his stupid fucking face. And now his followers are going to take his advice and go outside. Above the doctors, above the nurses, above the World Health Organization, the Center for Disease Control and all the experts, they're going to listen to Trump's stupid ass and go outside and go to baseball games. And we're going to have Easter at grandma's. I'm sure she'll accept sure she can take it. She's been through the war. You're an idiot. You know what I say? Go for it. Have fun. I'm tired. I'm tired of chasing these idiots. I'm tired of arguing against these Fox News watching morons. I'm not doing it anymore. And this is the first chance that I, I can give up on it and not feel any, any regrets. I don't feel bad at all. Here's why. The way I see Americans who think like that, the people who blindly follow Trump and just want to go outside during quarantine and they don't care about science and they're, they're just nerdy liberals. Those people who voted for this motherfucker in the first place are the first to go. You're the one exposing yourself and going outside. I'm not going to say go for it and I don't wish death on anybody at all, period. I think that's really bad karma. I think that's really bad in general. But it, they're like the kid who's down the street and you see him playing with a loaded gun. But the kid is also like an asshole. <laughs> I mean, you might yell a warning and be like, oh, dude, no, totally don't do that, though. Like, oh, chill out, hey, bro. But you know what's going to happen. And you just wait for it to happen. And in a way, you're like, well, you know what? At least the bully's gone. He kind of took care of himself. That's where we are right now with the right wing in America. So if you're smart and you listen to the experts, stay the fucking side. It's not going to be forever. You will have a summer. I promise you this isn't going to last the whole summer. You can still very soon just chill for a second. And the more of us that stay inside, the faster we beat this, the faster we can go back to sniffing coke off of hooker's titties. All right? Stay the fucking side. Now. Let's get right onto the advice. Let's do that, okay? That's what we're here for anyway. Um, I know a lot of the advice is probably going to be about the Rona, so feel free to write in. I don't know anything. I'm not an expert. I'm a stoner comedian who makes stupid memes and stupid videos, and that's who I am, all right? So as long as you feel comfortable getting advice from that guy, uh, yeah, by all means, let's, let's jump right into it. Here's the first one, okay? Oh, God, this has to be old. <laughs> It says, <clears throat> the coronavirus and whether it's a good idea to go clubbing this weekend. No, it's not a good idea to go clubbing this weekend. I'm sure by now you know this. At least I sincerely hope you did. First of all, all the clubs, all the clubs are closed. So I don't know where the fuck you're going to go. I guess you could try to break into a club if you have a crowbar, turn on all the lights, maybe play some music, make some drinks. Wow, that's actually a good idea. though. <laughs> like how long could you party in there before someone notices that you broke into the club and started shit up? I mean, it's not like an amusement park. Maybe Bridget and Beer is. But, I mean, it's not going to be, like, super loud where the police will come. But you know what? It wouldn't be worth it because you're there by yourself. It's not a club if you're alone. I mean, you could pretty much do that in your flat and not go to jail and get fucked in the butt. So, all right. Uh, yeah. Answer your question. Bad idea. Don't go clubbing. Next one. Need to do trap money, but there are already so many dealers don't want to get stabbed. Shaking my head. All right, translation, I want to sell drugs and make a lot of money, but I'm afraid that if I start selling, someone will get jealous and stab my body with knives, and then you will die. Okay, you know what? If you don't want to get stabbed, practically, maybe put a trash can lid, the metal ones around your, your front and your back, like one of those sandwich signs, you know what I'm talking about? You can do that if you just don't want to get stabbed, but I will say this. This is probably the first, the best possible time to start up your new drug business, because right now, we're in quarantine. You know what I mean? So it'd be really hard to stab you. <laughs> um, or they'll break in your flat, stab you, and they won't find your body until the quarantine's lifted. But that's probably not going to happen, depending on where you live and how high up and how uh, public you're making it. Go on Telegram. I don't think people on Telegram are stabbing each other. Aren't there people like on different apps? Go to WhatsApp. I don't know. Facebook. There's all these online platforms, people selling drugs. Just plug into one of those, build a little network. Be careful. Don't get caught. Um, I mean, I'm not telling you to do these things. I think it's illegal if I did that. I just mean, wait, is it? I'll say it like this. If it was me and I wanted to do drugs and sell drugs, excuse me, and do them too, probably. This is what I would do. Okay? But I'm not doing that, police eye who's listening, probably. I'm not doing that, so I'm not going to start a channel and sell drugs like that. But if I was, that's how I would do it. 
All right, I wish you luck, avoid the knives. Next. Too many distractions for my, too many distractions day and night for my ADHD ass. Too many distractions. You mean like life is just too exciting? Too many things going on? Um, it sucks because you live in the modern world. I think that's your problem. I think if you live back in the day where everyone had to survive, having ADHD people was a bonus. That was amazing. They can focus on so many things at once. They're hunting and gathering and they're protecting the fields from uh, intruding tribes. And you, you could be all over the place and, it, you know, it had a purpose. You could do something with it. Nowadays, it's like overloaded with like fucking Netflix and malls and sirens and joggers and it just the world is just it's crazy now it's too overwhelming your poor brain can't handle it all so what i would do if i were you i would i would take time to unwind okay i'm not a therapist i'm not going to give you medications and shit i'm just everything i give you by the way every advice i give is i put myself in that position and i think okay if it was me honestly how the fuck would i handle it so if it's me, I'm sitting there vibrating and shaking. I don't know what ADHD people do. You guys are like, I don't know. This is this is what I mean. I picture you guys like on meth, like I'm picking scab wounds on my arms and shit. Well, if that was me, I, w I would pick at least a few days a year and I would go in the woods. That's it. I would go camping. I would be alone. I would cut off all distractions and let my brain rest because it's, it's like anything else. You know what I mean? It's like if you keep your computer on and plugged in and running for too long, it starts to get hot and overheating. It starts having problems. I imagine your brain is probably like that hot-ass computer. It's probably overheating. Go camping. Go swimming naked in the lake while you're fishing. I don't know what people do when they're camping. <laughs> I could never afford to go camping. But you know what? Go camping. It can't be that hard. Homeless people do it every day. And they camp in the city where it's like needles and broken glass and shit. You can go in the woods and camp safely with the fucking birds and pigeons and shit. So I will go camping, rest your brain, um, don't drink a lot of caffeine, don't take cocaine, meth, all that shit, leave it, all right? Uh, what else would I do if it was me? ADHD? Um, maybe I'd work for like Lee Ferrando or something. It seems like one of those jobs because there's a bicycle, so you're exercising, you're burning out your energy, and you have to stay focused. I mean, I know it's hard to focus, but I mean, like, you don't have to stay focused for long because you make a delivery and then it's on to the next house and the next house and it's constantly changing. Neighborhoods are changing. I think it would probably do better to keep you interested. So go camping, come back, work for Lee Ferrando. That's my advice. I wish you luck. All right. Next one. How to find a job without perfect German. How well do you suck dick? Because I don't know what to tell you. Finding a job in Berlin can be pretty hard if you don't speak German, but it's not impossible. All right. There's a huge population of people here, people here, immigrants, expats who don't speak a lick of fucking Deutsch, my friend. A lick of Deutsch, not one little lick of the Deutsch. And they still have jobs and not just the blow in the hand kind. They have real actual jobs in offices with eyes and shit. So I, I don't speak such good Deutsch. I mean, I can survive if I have to go to the bar and stuff. But for jobs, ha, huh? yeah, right. You want to be disappointed? Listen to me speak Deutsch. But I survive. So it's not impossible. Um, I would say plug into some of the better websites, the more popular ones, uh, Indeed and uh, what is it, Zing. I don't know. I think Monster kind of sucks balls. But there's there's word of mouth networking. It's kind of hard to do now in quarantine. But there's jobs out there. Um, another thing I would do is you can also work backwards. So I don't know where you're coming from. If you're from Portugal, why don't you look up Portuguese-owned businesses that are based in Berlin? Boom. Work backwards. Fucking find a job that speaks your language. I just assumed you were Portuguese. <laughs> well, I guess wherever the fuck you're from, find where you're from and look for a job that way. All right? If I would, if I look for me, I look for fat, dumb, orange fucks. I think, okay, that's American. I'm going to look up for that, and maybe I find a job from an American-owned company. Like Coca-Cola or something. I think they have an office here, don't they? Um... I was going to say something, but I don't know if I'm allowed. I hesitate this shit because I don't want to get sued. Before, it's like I have like 200, 200 followers and it didn't matter. I was like, I would ever hit McDonald's. Fuck you. <laughs> and then like as you start climbing up to like the thousands, you start to get a little nervous because you're not big enough to really be sued yet, but you don't know where that line is. And most times you don't know the line of being sued until you cross it. And you're like, oh shit, I'm getting sued. I must be <laughs> I must be big enough now to sue. So um, I used to work for a place called Booking. I don't know if you know that place. 
Um, I used to disguise it back in the day, but I'm not doing that anymore. I used to work for Booking, the hotel company. And I would do CS, like customer service. It was one of the worst fucking jobs ever. Because it's only bad news customer service. No one's ever calling to be like, hey, I just wanted to call and say that this hotel was amazing. The guy came in, gave me a little little foot rub that was a mint to my pillow. I'm so excited. You know what? I'm going to use you again. Thank you. That happens never. Who does that? So it's only bad news. And some of the worst ones <laughs> were actually from Americans. Because the Americans were so fucking arrogant. They were so arrogant. There was this one guy. I'll tell you one call I had, okay? There was this dude, and he was pissed off about who knows what. And he was like, yeah, you know what? This is what's happening to our country. Or even the companies are starting to suck. This is, this is bullshit. And I was like, um, sorry, sir. You know, uh, the booking.com is not an American company. It's actually based in Amsterdam. And he was like, quiet for a second. He's like, well, fucking, of course it is. They're sending all the jobs overseas. What the fuck? It used to be here. That's the arrogance. Like, you just assume that it's American. It's not. Not everything's American. Anyway, um... Yeah, that job kind of sucked. I know I'm not really selling it right now, but there's jobs out there like that that don't suck. You can have a lot of fun. Startups. Go to startups. A lot of times you don't have to speak German to work at those, just depending on what your background is. There's always options, okay? When I first came here, I felt really, really discouraged. Um, my mom is Mexican. So I grew up, we were speaking Spanish. Um, I could make Mexican food. It's very easy for me. And when I first came here, I was applying to a Chaporro, or whatever the fuck that Mexican place is, the one in Noikun. I totally didn't get the job. And no, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't Chaporro. Chaporro was actually pretty chill. It was it was like Que Pasa. Que Pasa. You know what Que Pasa? Dude, the worst. I mean, I'm not going to shit on them. I'm sure it's a great company. Don't. If you eat there, you will have the worst farts of your life. I'm not even joking. We, me and my friends, we even have a coin. We coined a term. It's called Que Pasa Farts. Because that's what it's like. They smell so bad, you'll be like discombobulated. You're all like confused and shit. You'll be, you will be asking que pasa. Like, what the fuck happened? All right. So I went there and I was actually trying to get a job in a Mexican restaurant as a Mexican. And they didn't give me the job. I was like, there's literally not one Mexican working in here. I don't even know. Okay. Weird. But anyway, it can be hard. I was a little discouraged. And then now I have a much better job, better than que pasa. I imagine, <laughs> and uh, it didn't take so long. So keep your head up, keep going, buddy. Keep striving, keep keep reaching for the moon. And if you miss, you'll land among the stars, that stupid fucking saying, because the stars are farther than the moon. I never understood that, it doesn't even make sense. But anyway, you get the point. Uh, you can do it and stuff. <laughs> All right, next one. Is it worth leasing a Vespa? No, you're in Berlin. Steal a Vespa. Who leases anything? Um, I'm not telling you to steal. I'm saying I would steal. <laughs> no. um, probably not. I don't know how to answer that question, so I'm going to err on the side of caution and say probably not. Steal the Vespa. All right, next one. The biggest stress is the weather, which changes every fucking day into something different. I can't do nothing about the weather, dude. And... It's just like the people complain about where they live. You know, like my grandfather used to always say, wherever you go, there you are. Meaning it doesn't matter where you are. If you're not happy with yourself, you're not going to be happy where you go. And I think it's probably the same for the weather. Now, some weather helps, obviously. Sitting in rain all day probably doesn't help your mood. But if you're not happy anyway, then don't think I'm going to go to a sunny place and magically my life will be better. Because I'm from Hawaii. Don't forget, and Hawaii has a suicide rate. It exists. It's not a high suicide rate, but there are people who kill themselves in Hawaii. So, eh, you know what I mean? Um, get used to the weather. If you just can't take it and you're having breakdowns, move somewhere else. Um, it's, you're not looking at a very happy future, to be honest with you. The oceans are rising. Temperatures are rising. Food will get scarce. Locusts are eating up a lot of parts of Africa. People are moving north. You want to move south where it's warmer? I say go for it. Enjoy it in your lifetime while you can. Um, eventually, word of advice to anyone who actually wants to take it, head north. That's probably your best bet. Um, in your case, find somewhere warm, live out your days, retire in the sun, and be happy. Or get used to it. That's it. All right? I wish you luck. Next. Road traffic. Ugh. I don't know, dude. Ride a bike. Ride a bike. Um, there was this really cool documentary I saw recently about a personal flying cars and why we don't have them. And... 
I think that's a, that's one of the best failures in technology that we could ever hope for is that they're not allowed to think of the stupidest people you see walking around the city right now. There's a fucking pandemic. They're walking in groups of 10, drinking beers and laughing, not giving a shit. Do you want those same people also flying above your flat in a, in a automobile with wings? Of course not. They're going to go and crash into your wall when you're trying to watch Tot or in peace. You don't need that shit. So luckily we, ha we it, it's bordering on impossible to make an airplane car, at least not a feasible not in a feasible way, not in a realistic way. So I'll uh, be happy for that. Your advice, road traffic, ride a bike, go for a walk. Don't take the trains, at least not right now when there's a fucking pandemic. But um, it comes with every city. That's city life. Traffic is synonymous with living in the city. If you don't like traffic, then you don't like city. I've never seen a big, giant metropolis city with empty streets. It just does not happen. All right? Unless those ghost towns in China. I don't know if you've seen those. Those are fucking creepy entire town some of them look like disneyland some of them look like paris they all look like different things and big skyscrapers with nothing in them whole ghost cities it is creepy look it up you think i'm joking i'm not look up ghost city china i hope it's not a porno all right so road traffic leave the city or get a bike next one how the bus driver how to make the bus driver feel my anger when he ditches me so i guess you're running up to the bus hey and he's like, Meow, and he just leaves. You can do old school like the 50s. You can stand in the street and shake your fist in the air. I don't know what the hell that was about. <laughs> that solved nothing. But you could try that one. Just shake your fist angrily. Yeah! How dare you? You left me. I'm going to miss my job review now and get kicked out of my flat. My roommates don't want to listen to any more excuses. I'm going to live on the street having to give hand jobs for food. Oh, darn you. Or you could be psycho and take down the bus number. Follow it to the lot, find out who the driver was, wait for him in the parking lot for him to leave after work, and have a nice conversation with him. <laughs> That's all I can think of. I don't know. There's nothing you can really do. You can give him the finger. Um, you can carry condoms full of poop that you can throw at the bus driver, at the bus. Um, again, doesn't really affect him. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Maybe hop into a taxi if you're really that angry and say, follow that bus. Uh, pull in front of it at the next stop and then get out and let them know how you feel uh, that would exert a lot of time energy and money not, not sure how worth it that would be but if that's your goal there's your option all right i hope i helped you uh that's it wish you luck next one how to make tourists get out of the way without having to talk to them you don't really have to talk to anyone to make them get out of the way just make really loud weird noises that's something universal. There's there's things that are universal. People don't like loud, weird noises or weird situations that make them feel awkward. Like, nobody likes that. Um, and what else? No one wants gunshots, firecrackers. Those are It's universal around the world. People don't like those things. Um, and everybody laughs at farts. That's it. Those are the two universal things. Nobody likes loud noises. And farts are funny no matter where you go in the world. All right? So... I'm not telling you to fart them away. I'm telling you to go, just go up there and make loud, weird sounds. Maybe sound crazy. Talk to yourself. Move your hands around in the air a lot. Like you're like you're doing some kind of interpretive dance, but there's only music that you can hear. Do stuff like that. That makes people really get the fuck out of your way. Um, I think if you're acting like you have Tourette's, that usually makes people uncomfortable. You can probably scream and yell random things out loud. Hitler wasn't that bad. You know, stuff like that. People will definitely get the fuck out of your way then. Uh, that's about it. Except, I mean, if you don't want to get physical with them, you, you, you can do that. You know what? That's my advice. You can take it. You know, I wish you luck. How to explain the people that rubber gloves and scarf face, scarf face won't save them from anything. That's what it says. How to explain to people that rubber gloves and scarf face won't save them from anything. It's like the thing I said about America. You can't. Some people you can explain to, some people you cannot. And those that you cannot, you got to sit back and let natural selection take over. You have to. This is Darwinism, my friend. The people who listen to the experts and follow the best advice possible are the ones that live longer. That's it. It's not rocket science. It's not so complicated. So let them have their fun. You can tell them, hey, by the way, those things don't help. And some people will be like, oh, really? Oh, shit, my bad. Or they'll look it up. You know what I mean? And they're fine with it. That's fine. That's okay. But the people who are refusing to believe you and just do whatever, yeah, whatever. Let them do it. 
you know? It's not gonna hurt you, just just ignore it. Now, okay, it hurts you if they're taking stock away from people that need it, like actual hospital workers. Okay, that sucks balls. Um, but you're not gonna crack them over the head with a club and fucking steal their mask off their face and run and give it to a, a medical worker. It's probably not gonna happen. Um, just look at them shamefully. <laughs> just look at them disapprovingly. Like, ugh, you exist. I don't know. That's probably as best as you can do, and I'm sure it'll have its intended purpose, all right? Uh, I wish you luck next one. Finding a home in one day with someone who isn't a psychopath. I don't know if that's possible. Finding a home in one day? In America, you could. I mean, if you're rich, you could just go slap a suitcase full of money like in the movies on the table, and you can get a home in one day. Easy. Easy peasy. They will even fast forward the paperwork for you. But they don't do that shit here. So here, I don't know if you can find one in one day. In fact, if you want to need a flat in one day, there might only be psychopaths. <laughs> it's like when the people have like the sexual favors mixed in with the rent. Like the rent's only 200 euros, but I'm going to need you to rub cocoa butter on the back of my thighs before I go to sleep. You're like, why uh, is that a thing? Why? I don't want to do any of that. Those are the only things that are left. Um... If you want to do it for one day. When I first came here, by the way, I learned that the hard way. I was really desperate trying to find a flat. And there's not a lot of flats, you know, uh, newsflash. And I went there and I saw this flat I really fucking wanted. I mean, I really wanted. I think it was by like Frankfurt the Tour. And I was thinking, dude, I went to lady. I was like, yeah, here's my application. My references, pay stubs, everything I need, right? She's like, yeah, it looks like you have everything you need here. Yeah. Um, I will process this paperwork. And I will get back to you uh, soon. Okay, fine. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, by the way, I don't know if this helps the uh, the process anyway. Move a little faster. Uh, maybe it can go to some kind of fee or something. Not joking. I really did this. And I slid like 100 euros across the table to her. <laughs> and the look on her face. Like in America, like their eyebrow would go up and they kind of looked to both sides. And they were like... Take the bill, maybe slide it in the jacket pocket and be like, I'll see what I can do. You know what I mean? It's not like that in Germany. Don't do it. You'll be embarrassed. She slid that shit back so fast. She's like, um, look here. We don't operate this way in Germany. This is not America. Uh, everything is above board here. I appreciate your donation. And that was it. So I had to take the money back and look stupid. And I didn't get the flat and she didn't call me back. And it was really awkward. Don't do it. So, um, if you want to find a flat in one day, it's probably going to be with a psychopath. Um, or it's with a really desperate, blind, deaf old lady who really just needs some help around the house. Um, I would choose option B. All right. I wish you luck. Next one. I think that's it. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's it. All right. Well, um, thanks everybody for writing in. This has been a, uh, adventure this last few months going from, uh, complaining about work and all this shit you have to do and all the school is ending and all these things are going on. I have my test and then everything just halts to a stop and we're all stuck indoors. We live on Instagram. We live on Netflix. We live in like chats with our families and this is the, this is not the new normal, but this is the new normal for now. I would say this, be strong. It's not going to last forever. Be there for your friends. Help them out. These are new situations, so you never know how anyone's going to react to it. You just couldn't know because no one's been put into the situation. Not in this lifetime. So keep an eye on your friends. Keep an eye on the people that you're only so, so close to as well. They also need love. And for the most part, if we stick together and we have each other's backs, we're going to be fine. Okay? With all the bullshit we have to go through in the daily, living in Berlin alone, I doubt that coronavirus is going to be the one thing that takes us down. I seriously doubt it. Um, if you have worries about it, don't. Do not. This too will pass. What doesn't kill you doesn't make you stronger. It just makes you whatever you are right now. However, I will say this. As long as you're here, death is not. And when death comes, you're already gone anyway. So enjoy it. Have fun. Even if you're stuck indoors, explore what you can digitally. Go for a walk and find the pleasures in life. They're always there, no matter what situation. It's always, always there, all right? You keep your head up, smoke a couple of joints, have a couple of drinks, talk to some friends. You're going to be all right. You'll be in the sun in no time, all right? Please continue writing to us. Let us know if you have any issues you want us to bring up. Any questions you want us to answer, we'll definitely do that. 
Um, hopefully, Shamal will be back on here soon once his quarantine has been lifted, buddy, and we can get back down to business. All right. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for taking the time. This is the Birch Podcast. See you next time. I guess that's it. Nipples and dicks, because why not? <laughs>